You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan Tejas is here. Hello. Thank you. Uh, you know, we had, Ryan, we've had some great podcasts lately. We have. We had uh, two good ones yesterday. Great yeah. Ones. Two great ones. And the ones that are airing are really good. Everywhere from Tom Ellis to our, to our 300th episode with Tom Welling. And I want to thank everybody again for that. Um, it's been great. We had Keanu Reeves. We had... Uh, and Dogstar. Dogstar. We had, we had a great year. Yeah. And uh, we're kicking it off right this year. We've got a lot of great guests. And uh, I couldn't do this without you. You know, there's so many podcasts out there, but we've been around a while. And, uh, you know, we talk about mental health and real stuff. And I think that's why people gravitate towards the show. But uh, if you want to support the show more and help us, which we could use your help, uh, go to patreon.com slash inside of you. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash inside of you. It's like a streaming service. Imagine, you know, people give, you know, they help out, they they subscribe to streaming services. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you want to do that, um, and there's a lot of perks on the Patreon. If you go, there's, I'm doing a YouTube live with folks, the top tiers I'm doing a Zoom with, top tiers get their names called out on every show. Um, they get to ask questions to the guests. Um, they get boxes sent by me every couple of months and notes and it's a really good time and it's become a real good family on the Patreon. So patreon.com slash inside of you. And uh, we're going to get into the episode in a minute. Um, also my new product, Rosie's puppy, fresh breath. You can go on Amazon and get it. It's uh, an additive for your dogs just to drop in their bowl and their breath is better period. It's uh, odorless, tasteless. It's awesome. And uh, my picture's on the bottle. Oh, yeah, Rosie's Puppy Fresh Breath. Now, does it work on you? You know what? I'll try it. I'll try it. If it's good for my dog, it's good for me. Well, it's goose, good for the goose. It's good for the, what is it? It's good for the goose. It's good for the gander. What does that mean? Uh, it's. I think it's akin to happy wife, happy life. <laughs> well, it's good for the goose. It's good for the gander. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess so. Gander being a male goose. Yeah. Uh, the handles here for inside of you, if you want to follow us and subscribe, which would help. And if you want to write a review, what are the handles, Ryan? At inside of you pod on Twitter, at inside of you podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, by the way, the uh, the inside of you online store is available for we have there's if you love Smallville, there's tons of great merch that you can't get anywhere signed by me. And also, um, yeah, so you might want to go to the inside of you online store and get some stuff. There's stuff that you just can't get. Um, I'll also be at some cons. I'll be in North Carolina. On the 17th, the weekend with Tom Welling, we're doing a Smallville night. You can go on my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum, and you could certainly hit my link tree. And it tells you everything I'm doing. Uh, I apologize for canceling the live event, but scheduling and my surgery and all those things. And uh, Yeah. Shit happens. Would you say shake your link tree? Like give it a shake? Like, you know, you're getting a... You can give my, shake my link tree. Yeah, like, it, like it's a tree. That almost sounds rough. <laughs> shake my link tree. No, like you're getting an apple. Yeah, I know what you're saying there, buddy, but tell me tell you something about myself. I am thrice divorced. <laughs> uh, Katie Sackoff has been on the podcast before. Mandalorian, um, Longmire, tons of work, Battlestar Galactica. She's really great on this podcast, and I did hers. She has a new podcast we talk about and, and so much other stuff. She's so open. She's so sweet. I love having her on. And um, yeah, is there anything else I should mention? Thanks for listening to Talkville as well, promote mm-hmm. Talkville. And um, yeah, everything's going right. Is everything going good? I know you're going to do better help now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, geez, that was loud. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. You're I'm back get, on get now. Get back into it. I took the holidays off. Yeah. Which is could be a mistake. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I my therapist retired, and so I just decided to take a little break, take a little breather, and then I'm just going to get back on it. Yeah, yeah, well, that's great. Uh, it's it's huh. so easy, man. It's really, I mean, you could tell people how easy it is. It's super easy. I mean, you fill out like a little questionnaire and then you're off to the races. Yeah, pretty much. Just that easy. Just that easy. Yeah, we could all use help. Believe me, I go to therapy. I just got out of therapy right before this. Good. We talked about all my um, ailments <laughs> and uh, life. And, you know, there's a lot of good positive things. You know, that you start to figure out, you become uh, aware of things, work on things. I love it. Um, all right, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get inside of Katie Sackoff. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. 
Yeah, you're, the, the mic's a little. You want. I'm just gonna play with it for a second. You can do whatever you want. I, I usually I like to play with it until I get it in the right spot. Yeah, and as long then as I you're feel not making noise over there, Katie. Once I get it in the right spot, I feel in control. Now you're in control. Now I'm in control. I actually got to see you in control just about 30 minutes ago. I was on your new podcast. You that's were coming out called Blah 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 with Katie Sackhoff. Yes, blah blah blah. Why did you like? There's there's so many podcasts. And it's so, I hate to use the word. What's another word for oversaturated? Because everybody, oversaturated, oversaturated. is oversaturated. <laughs> oversaturated. Uh, everybody word. uses that word. It's, uh, there's an abundance of podcasts. And what do you, what, A, why did you want to do a podcast? And um, what's the subject matter? I know because I was just interviewed mm, mm. and it felt very, it just felt, you were very, you made me at ease. You made me feel comfortable. We talked mental health. We talked life in ways that was sort of like mine. Yeah. But like more of a, a female perspective. Yeah. So maybe that's, what what is it? What is it, Katie? Well, you basically just hit the nail on the head. I want to just have real authentic conversations with people about life and about work and about love and mental health and aging in this business, everything you can think of. Um, and I want it to be from the female perspective because I don't feel like there are a lot of women doing podcasts well. But there, I don't feel. I didn't feel like the way I wanted to do a podcast or listen to a podcast was there with a female. So Does you that wanted to fill that so that I, void. I did see a little bit of a void in a weird, Good. oversaturated place that no. I thought that I could find a, I could find, I could carve a spot out for myself. Yeah. Um, and that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to just be conversations with two friends. And we joked about this, but if you could be a fly on the wall while two friends are having a cup of coffee, that's what it should feel like. It should feel like you're eavesdropping on a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I appreciate that you sort of, you know, you said that doing this podcast kind of gave you that, you know, a little bit of the idea to, to do this. And you asked me questions and like, you know, we were in the car and went like, you know, just ideas. And, you know, my ultimately I was just like, just be vulnerable be real you know authentic genuine those words are the number one part of the show you as long as you are doing this because you care because you care about the guests you want to listen you want to get something from them and your audience and you give them that same appreciation i think that um over time people will gravitate towards you you know i uh text my buddy ethan who's a massive star wars fan and I am too, but he knows a lot more. I, I I don't go down that whole rabbit hole of all these new shows as much as I loved Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. That was the one to me that felt like old school and it just, I mean, it captivated an audience. I mean, people yeah. were just, holy shit. When, you know, his text to me was like, he just loves the fact that you in clone wars you also voice bo yeah, right i did yeah so for Bo for like um isn't that a city uh, in florida bo -Katan? <laughs> it actually is boca raton, boca -Raton. <laughs> um uh and <laughs> i was gonna just make a politically inappropriate joke but never mind i voiced her for about 10 years um not what? many episodes though not many episodes ah. i only did probably eight episodes but she made an impression you know, she was around sort of at the end of Clone Wars. She was in Rebels as well. Like she had, she had an integral part in the, um, the, the tone of what it was when it ended. So it did make complete sense for her to find her way into Mandalorian. So you were doing this voice before you did the real part. Yeah. The, at live action, not the real I part. I did. Yeah, action. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. how many times is somebody, the voice is something and they make them the live action. I, I can't think of any. So are there? I think that I might have been the first, actually. And I, oh, I don't say this with an ego. No. I just say that I it's been I've been told. I've been told that it's gone the other direction, but never this direction. Are you uh so what are, are right before the strike, were you filming? No. No. Oddly enough, uh, we finished we finished this last season, last like April, like over a year ago. Um, and then uh, the next season, Amanda hasn't started yet. What are you going to tell me about that? I am 
so good at not giving away spoilers at this point because I'm so scared that like someone from Disney will swoop in and like you is will it, never hear is from it, me is, again. Are things that happen? A- answer me this. We'll beat around the bush. Yeah, yeah. Are they going to shock the audience? Um, you know, I think that's the thing with this um universe is that no matter what you do, you will always shock 50% of the audience. You know what I mean? Um, and so I, I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. I'm sure there will be fun, crazy moments that people water cooler about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. How many episodes? You can't even tell me that, huh? No. How many episodes did they shoot? You can't even say that. I mean, they've done, I think they've done like eight every season. Okay. So yeah. you're not telling me anything then you know. no <laughs> so there's, there's probably eight and so you're in either one or one up to eight of them that i mean that would that would be one logical. guess that would be one logical that would guess. be one guess i yeah. bet you're in five episodes <laughs> that's my guess i bet you're in five episodes i guess we'll um, see. are they very like hush hush like literally you can't say anything yeah and who tells you this no one really Really, they don't like say this, anything. No, it's like the. I mean, y- we sign NDAs that are like super thick, um, and but you don't really, you don't really get a conversation from anyone unless you make a mistake, and then you get a conversation. I haven't really had one yet. So you haven't made mistakes. No, I mean, I've made a shit ton of mistakes, just not in spoiler world. Is there anyone in this upcoming season that you've already shot? <laughs> Are we at a high altitude? What are you doing? <laughs> no, I get like weird um migraines. I yeah, I have TMJ, so I grind my teeth a lot. I do too. I grind my teeth all the time. It's you know crazy. that? I yeah. grind my teeth. I always could hear it, but you can't hear it. Because it's in my mouth, Jason. But I'm sure <laughs> you, Yeah, that's you know. Yeah. So I my ears when I grind a lot, it's sort of like I need to itch my ears and I blow, I blow a lot. Do you love this world? Do you honestly hope this world continues for you, the Star Wars world, for many, many years to come? Yeah. You know, it's been such a dream come true. I I, I was a fan of, of the original trilogy when I was a kid. Um, my dad introduced me to them. My dad is a huge Star Wars fan. Um, and and I, I used to joke that, you know, when I moved here, I used to joke that if if someone calls for me to be in Star Wars, I'll beg them. I'll tell them I'll be a rock. I'll me do too. whatever they want. So Clone Wars was just such a, an amazing opportunity for me as like a fan of the the, the universe to be in this world. Um, and so it's just she is literally the gift that keeps on giving. I never dreamed that I would be such an integral part of season three. And and I just I, I want to keep playing her until there's no storylines left to tell. In the Clone Wars, does she, she doesn't die, right? No. Mm-mm. Does she die ever? No. In anywhere in any universe? No, she hasn't. She hasn't as of that I know of. <laughs> she's not dead. There's no speculation. Or no, no, she's still she alive die. and kicking. Would that just be nightmarish if somebody goes, it's the end of the road? When that time comes, will you be really emotional when they're like, hey, you know, this is all we can do with the character for right now? I think so. I think so. But at the same time, like, I like, 100% thoroughly respect what Dave and and Dave Fa- uh, Filoni and John Favreau have created and what they know of this character that if they said that I would be like okay cool like that was really awesome yeah. it was really awesome do you have any uh conversations with them as friends like during the year or is it not really yeah. like you're like they're great but you you could text them and just say hey I'm yeah. thinking of you blah blah, blah. Yeah, you know, the older I've gotten, the more I do that, where if I'm thinking of someone or if I have a, a a fond conversation with someone about someone else, I usually will let that person know that they were on my mind and in my thoughts that day because I, you know, we talked about this a little bit before, There, nothing's guaranteed, you know? I know. Like, Gosh. I just want to tell people that they matter, that they matter, and that, you know, I enjoy them and I think of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I so I do text them. I that's them. important. I do text them. Every once in a while, just to say Who's hi. nerdier, Favreau or Filoni? Oh, my God, Filoni. Well, th- I don't know. I would say... Who tries to be cooler but isn't? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> you? <laughs> um, no, they're both pretty cool. They're both pretty cool. John's pretty cool. Dave is uh, Dave is, is quite wonderful. Mm. They're both just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I met John before. 
he's he was really sweet. Yeah, he's super wonderful. He's a great boss. Inside of you is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money. Listen to this. You're going to save money by using Rocket Money. This is an amazing, amazing app, Ryan. I use it. um, And the great thing is we all have subscriptions and we never remember that we still have subscriptions. We we get, you know, Fluby has a series on that we want to watch, right? We watch the Fluby. We go, okay, we'll give you $5.99, $10.99, whatever the price is. I'll watch it, the program, and I'll delete it. Mm -hmm. Well, 10 months later, you forgot, and now you owe 150 bucks to Fluby. Yep. for watching one little show that you actually was crap yep so rocket money does all this for you um you feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going well i know it's all the subscriptions um streaming devices fitness apps delivery services parenting apps it's endless and i'm guilty of this i admit Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. And I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with one tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service, and you know how big that is. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash inside. That's rocketmoney.com slash inside. Rocket Money dot com slash inside do it save money now inside of you is brought to you by wondery even the royals being a king or queen might seem enticing but more often than not it comes at the expense of everything else like your freedom your privacy and sometimes even your head the creators of Wondery's Even the Rich are bringing you a brand new podcast called Even the Royals, where hosts Brooke and Arisha pull back the curtain on royal families, past and present, from all over the world to show you the darker side of what it means to be royalty. From stories about one of the most infamous royals in history, Marie Antoinette, but everything you know about her is wrong. After she became queen at just 19 years old, she ended up in a battle with the French press and started a series of impossible-to-believe events. It's history's greatest smear campaign, and it had deadly consequences. Or what might be the worst royal marriage of all time between King George IV and Caroline of Brunswick. It's a story involving catfishing, fake pregnancies, and it all leads to a divorce trial where the whole world sat on the edge of their seats to see how it would all play out. Follow Even the Royals on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge Even the Royals ad-free right now on Wondery Plus. I mean, you know, I I know that you were once a swimmer and you got an injury and that kind of took you out, but you really wanted to swim. You, you, you were, you were, you had aspirations of sort of like Olympics, Olympic sort of shit. I mean, in my wildest dreams, yes, for sure. Um, I, I absolutely could have swum in college for, I believe that and had like a really great run in school. Um, are you still good when you go swimming? You can tell like, wow, this girl's a swimmer. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Um, I don't really swim for fun anymore. I think that like, um, you know, all those daily doubles and dry land training took it out of me. And now yeah. I'm like, I just sort of like when I get in a pool now, I sort of like abandon, like wild abandon play like a child. Like I do handstands and I do like circles Dude, under the water. And like what, I just that's play. That's what I do. They all make fun of me. When I go into a pool, I always tell who, who, whatever friends with me, let's see how, who could do the most somersaults underwater. Yeah. And they're like, why do you want to do this? I'm like, I don't know. It feels good. It makes me, me tickle. It's fun. It tickles me. Yeah. It tickles my stomach. I love to drop <laughs> my daughters too. And like we, I love to drop all those stuff in the bottom of the pool and like swim down with her and and get them and does she have her eyes wide open mm-hmm. and we I look at each so other and cute. we go i always love those videos of babies underwater going it's so cute eyes just, like just nirvana-esque like, yeah yeah if you w- weren't going to become an actress mm. you know like honestly what would you like to do like what because you love it so much i mean you're doing a podcast but like if you weren't in the entertainment industry mm-hmm. what would you be doing right now 
Like right now? I mean, right now at, at uh, 2.30 PST. <laughs> so I think if you asked me when I was, you know, 16, I would have said that I would have gone into journalism or I would have done something on camera or something like that. Um, now, God, life is just about leisure. I want, <laughs> you know, I want to, and, and, and not that I can afford to have a life of leisure, but like I... I want to spend time with my family in relaxing settings, doing joyful things um, as much as possible. Sure. Um, I would love to to um, make wine. I would love to have really? um, my own winery, but I need to be in a place financially where making money is not, um, not important. Are you saying that uh, Disney doesn't pay a lot? <laughs> they're notorious for not really are they yeah. you know one of the things that happened in our industry with streaming is that um the consistency of work went down because the holds remain the same um and what that mean for your audience that means that the length of your contract you basically are under contract from a certain date to a certain date and they have any time within that date to pick you up for the next season um, they usually wait to the last minute. They prevent you from doing other stuff. And the problem is those those holds are insanely long. They're like 12, 13, 16 months from your last day on set, not from the beginning, from your last day on set. And the problem mm. is you're doing eight episodes now. You're not doing 22 anymore. Right. So you can't so, rely on a big paycheck. Really. No. And it's it's your time on hold is so much longer now. And, you know, they can say, we're not preventing you from getting work, but other companies won't touch you with a 10 foot pole if they know you're under contract with someone else. So there's a, there's a lot of downtime, which one yeah. of the things is the residuals. Actors used to be able to support themselves off residuals during those insane long holds that doesn't exist anymore. So, so, you know, um, they pay me very well and, and well enough for sure. But um, but I would love to have uh, more episodes or shorter hold times for sure. And not just with that company, with any company. Yeah. I mean, look, these, the roles that we get, you know, in this industry, we don't know how long they're going to last. We don't know if they're going to last a season or get cut short yeah. and not do a whole season or two seasons or whatever it is. So all this time that you work on, you make what seems like a significant amount of money. Yeah. Some more significant than others. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you don't know what's next though. And most of the time people have jobs, they work nine to five jobs or whatever they're doing. They know they have work tomorrow, next week, as far as they're, they have their right. job for the most part. Right. But with actors, you, it's a, again, it's ephemeral. feast or famine. Yeah, yeah. You're just, okay, well, this project's over. I got to go get another job. So you're always looking for another job. Yeah. And so it's, uh, you know, yeah, it's it is like that and it's a little um terrifying when you have a family as well because sure. our insurance is is completely tied, our health insurance is completely tied to our the amount of money we make. Yeah. And if you're on hold and you start to go, well crap. You know, yeah, everyone's like you know, the, and and people and it's not it's not them being rude, it's not anything, but people just don't understand the industry. They're like, "Why don't you work for Marvel? Why don't you go work for oh, blah, yeah. blah blah blah?" And I'm like, "Same thing." I'm like, "Guys, they haven't called me. Don't you think I would love to have a job right now?" My no friend, one's yeah. called. My friends do the same thing, but it's usually yeah. about women. Why don't you date Nicole Kidman, man? I'm like, <laughs> "Well, uh, she's dating a rock star and I don't know her." <laughs> well, can't you meet her? I, I mean, shut just shut up. That's yeah. what I want to say. That's what I say to my friends. They think, you know, hey, man, I want to know what you're. It's, it, yeah, it, because only because they don't get it. Yeah. They don't know the world that we live in. Of that's course. kind of like it's not all that glamorous a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Most times it's not. Um, it could be great, but uh, it's. And it's a small world too, isn't it? It feels it's very, very small. small. It's very small. It's it is very small, and it's very like, um, uh, you know, this is just really it's a really tiny business. Everybody knows everybody to a certain extent. Everybody is, you know, known someone who's worked with someone that that's worked with someone, and and you get to a certain point, and you're like, well, if the if the phone's not ringing, it's it's just because there's nothing right for me right now. You know, I know we didn't talk about this last time. I don't know if you even talk about it since, but you're, you're doing a podcast already. You're yeah. getting personal. You're getting vulnerable. You're getting open. When did you have thyroid cancer? 
Oh, God. 2008. 2008. So roughly 15 years ago. Yeah. And when you first got thyroid cancer, I'm guessing you didn't really know a lot about thyroid cancer or your thyroid. I didn't know where it was on my body, to be honest. I mean, I did, obviously, because I had a lump on it. Where is it? It's right in your neck. Oh, so I have a okay. scar there. Right. Um, I didn't even know the scar. Yeah. They, the surgeon did a great job. But like, you know, no, I didn't think that I would soon be an expert on thyroids. And now you are? I mean, within reason. Yeah. So what was it that you went into? Was it a random checkup? Were you fatigued? Were you, what was the symptom that you kind of thought this is not right? You know, my gynecologist actually felt the the nodule during my exam. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine? She has On your really, neck. really long arms. No, she, she was feeling my neck as they do. <laughs> right. And she, um, she felt it and was like, huh, we should go get that checked out. And it, it sort of coincided with me being really exhausted at the end of Battlestar. And like really like, like too much exhaustion. Yeah, I think so. But I also think that one of the things I've learned about thyroid disorder is that it's very easy to blame um, a lot of our discontent with things in our life, whether they be physical, emotional, or or otherwise, um, on your thyroid because it has so much control over so much of your body. It is involved in so many different things that it is possible that it's affecting all of these things in your life. Or it's also possible that you're slightly depressed, you're overworked, you don't sleep, you eat like crap, you're drinking That's too much. That's most of the time what it is. You know what I 90 mean? 90% percent of the time it's that. Yeah. And then every once in a while it's a real reason. Yeah. Can you feel my thyroid real quick? <laughs> I can, okay. I can. Why, do you have a thing? No, I just wanna know. Yeah, but does it feel normal? Yeah. There's okay. no. I, you're going a little too long, and I felt like you're, no. something was wrong. No, I've never felt someone else's thyroid before. That was kind of weird. I've never felt somebody else's thyroid before. It might actually be a little higher than that, Michael. Oh, so you didn't know if you felt it? Yeah, it's like right here. But you can't really feel the thyroid. Uh, you could feel a nodule on mine. Well, that's what I'm saying. If I had a nodule or something, but I don't have it. I don't think. No, I, I don't think so. They'd know. Were um, you scared instantly? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, anytime somebody tells you that you have cancer, no matter, you know, how old you are or what the cancer is or, or, you know, the, the survival rate or any of those things. I think that the C word is such a terrifying thing. And for me, it was like really, really scary. Um, but afterwards I actually had a lot of survivor's guilt afterwards because my, my cancer felt so treatable. Um, they removed my thyroid, they removed some lymph nodes surrounding my thyroid and, you know, I have to take a pill for the rest of my life and work on my Once levels and things like that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I was okay. Um, I saw a lot of people at the hospital that weren't, um, and there is a lot of, um, a lot of guilt over that. And I was always sort of like ready for the other shoe to drop. So I've always been a little terrified of doctors. I go all the time. Um, but I, you know, I just had that Pranuva scan. Like I, I, did I, that too. I just want to like knowledge is power. And so I'm like a little bit of a hypochondriac when it comes to medicine now, because I'm a little scared that, that, uh, you know, the other shoe was going to drop. It's interesting. I, you know, when a doctor, I'll be a gynecologist, whatever says, I think you should get that checked out. I thought you said, I'll be a gynecologist. Oh, no. Like I thought you I'll were going it, right? to like, I'll be it. I'll be it. Yes. I I'll heard be it. I'll be, I'll be a gynecologist. I'll be a gynecologist. I'll be a gynecologist. All right. So I'll be it a gynecologist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. When she says that, Hmm, you know, I think you should get this looked at mm. Or you mean like, well, does it, does it feel bad? It were you constantly asking questions and she's like i don't know I, it doesn't look good or no, and, and, she's and, just go go get it checked out you know and and go to a thyroid doctor and get it checked out I, I think that when you are young we are blissfully like ignorant to mm -hmm. to um consequence and death you know and i think that anytime that you encounter something in your life that stops you and and um sort of like uh, opens your eyes to the fragility of it all you become hyper aware of it at a very young age. And that's what happened to me. Do you remember when the doctor actually, did you go in the office when he said, you have thyroid, we found cancer? Yeah. 
Was yeah. that, do you remember how you felt? Was it, cause I imagine it's sort of numbing. It is numbing. And then I felt really sorry for myself. Um, and then, you know, um, I used it. I used it to feel sorry for myself for a long time. Mm. And about two years after they removed my thyroid, I had a doctor literally say to me, you need to stop blaming the fact that you don't have a thyroid on everything in your life that's going wrong and take some responsibility for the things that are going wrong. Wow. And I was like, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I did. I started eating healthier. I started working out. I got out of the relationship that I was in. I, I made changes in my life. Um, and I took responsibility for that. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. What, uh, what is it like without a thyroid? Do you, would, would anyone even notice it? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think that anyone would notice with me. Um, you know, my levels have always been really great. Um, I'm on top of it. I'm constantly getting my blood work done, making sure that, that, that my levels are okay. What levels? Cause you have no thyroid, but, you, but it, thyroid makes. So uh, THC, you, THC, THC, if my thyroid makes THC, I am one lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> your TSH. So it's your, your T3 and your T4. Um, but basically it can, I mean, there's no shortage of things that your thyroid controls, your metabolism, your energy, your, you know, um, your hormones, your And so everything. without one. I take a pill every day. And what does that pill do? It is false. Um, it's fake T3 and T4. Really? Every day. Yeah. So if the world ended, so during COVID, everyone was really scared about not being able to get pills and shortages of things and stuff like that. Um, if I didn't take my thyroid meds for two weeks, it would be really, really, really bad for my entire body. It would shut down. You notice probably if you don't take it for a day or two. Um, so, so Synthroid has a shelf life of, of a, like 14 days. Mm. Um, so uh, if you miss a day, it actually just lowers your overall number of your microcardiograms that you're taking. So if you're, say you're on 150 and your doctor's like, mm, we really want you to be on 145. Well, they don't make a 145. So what they'll do is they'll say, mm, one day a week, take half a pill. And it lowers your whole ah. level down, things like that. So it's kind of like yeah. me with Xanax or something. Yeah. It's although, just like a half if you're going on a plane. Well, a yeah, lot. but like the no, shelf life take, of Xanax is I don't really short. Yeah, I don't take, take Xanax hours. anymore. Yeah. No, I haven't taken one in years. It's good. It's bad for you. I mean, yeah. just in the sense that it's very addictive. But I, I'm on, you know, an antidepressant, which helps with my anxiety. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah, it's amazing. I went through the like just everything, and I thought nothing's helping me. Yeah. And it's amazing. Each body is different. Each brain chemistry is different. So Lexapro works for me. Mm. But it may, you know, I've heard it doesn't work for other people. But it works for a lot of people. So yeah. there's, you just have to do it. And, you, and it's, it is work. It took me a fucking year a year or more to go through hell of all the different drugs zoloft and i'm like oh my god i just i'm having more anxiety and then this other i forgot the name of them all yeah but they would just and i'm not saying they don't work they didn't work for me yeah and then i, I was about to give up i go i don't know what to do my ther my psychiatrist is like there's still some just hang on yeah and i remember taking it and I just waited, waited, and finally, after a couple of months, I go, I'm definitely better. Do you do any kind of antidepressants or anything? So, no, not on any antidepressants. Um, but I do, like we talked about, I, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Mm -hmm. um, and so I situationally will take half of a pill right. to focus my mind. Situationally. Inside of You is brought to you by Shopify. Listen to me. I... I'm not really good with computers. And when I started having an inside of you online store for people to shop at, I thought it was going to be a pain in the butt. And it's so freaking easy with Shopify. Shopify, you can find everything, like your number one product that you sell. Oh, look, it's right there. Everything is right there for you. Your orders, your products, add a product. 
discount. It's right there. It's so easy to use. And um, I really love it. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. Guys, this is so easy. If you want to sell products, Shopify is the only place I can think of. It's the only place that I trust. Uh, it's super easy. My, both my Talkville and Inside You stores, people love them. It's easy to navigate. Um, I urge you, if you have anything to sell, to use Shopify. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash inside, all lowercase, shopify.com slash inside now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash inside. Situationally is a tough thing. Yeah. Because it's all the time. So yeah. I feel like if I just say I want to focus today, mm. then I'm not focusing the next day. And it also it, it's weird weirdly gives me an energy. Yeah. A little bit of a, you know, like I'm focused. I'm a little more hyper focused, at least for the first five hours of the day. And then I kind of crash. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, I take it every day. I don't take what you take. Yeah. And I don't take Adderall. Yeah. But I take something that works for me, again, called Vivance. And, and yeah. the Vivance is, um, you can do that. You can take it when when needed. But, you know, um, you know, these things give me normalcy, something that I don't really, asso I haven't associated with my whole life. It was always like, I didn't realize I had this this anxiety my whole life. Mm -hmm. Have you dealt with a lot of anxiety or is it something that you haven't really had to? No, I, I do. I mean, yes. Um, and, and situational anxiety, I think I, I say that a lot because I don't, uh, for me personally, I don't like to label myself overall as something because I feel like for me, it would make me lean into that a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, for me personally. So um, there are things that give me tremendous anxiety in life. I am not an anxious person, though, in general. Just there are things. Like I am a horrific flyer. I do not like I flying. I don't like flying. Not a fan of it. Not a fan. Um, I, um, you know, um, before I go on stage, terrifying. Terrifying to me. My stomach goes in knots. I get really bad. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Like – you're really you got to feel like you go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff happens to All you. All of that stuff happens to me. All that stuff me. happens to me, except now that I'm on something that levels me and takes away that intense anxiety. Yeah. It is bearable. Interesting. For the yeah. first time in my life. I get that. And that's only been a year, probably, of feeling like that. Oh, I, well, that's so wonderful my that you found something now. My whole fucking life, like yeah. anxious about everything. And I'm still anxious about things. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't fix the problem. You got to work on those things. But yeah, but you're not a genuinely an anxious person situational, like you said. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I found that a lot of my anxiety stemmed from my insecurities about things. And I found that if I allowed people into my life that validated my insecurities, my anxiety got worse. Mm. So as soon as I started removing people in my life that that validated my insecurities, my anxiety got lesser. Validated your insecurities. Yeah. Made you think you were something you really weren't, but almost, yeah, almost like, yeah, could have been accentuating a bit of those yeah. adverse things. Yeah. That these, uh, what do they call them? Your uh, traits. Your traits. Yeah, your yeah, traits. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. And that is similarly, similarly. Mm -hmm. 
Can you say similarly? Say it. <laughs> similarly. Good. Similarly. 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 Now it gets harder <laughs> it the more you do it. Say Sim- toy boat five times fast. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Pretty good. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Oh my gosh. So do you like Fantastic Mr. Fox? I Have know you read of this it, for a long but time? I haven't. I don't know. So my daughter likes Dr. Seuss and we have Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I wish that I had this book like when I first started acting back in the day, because the tongue twisters in this book are just insane. Give me one. I don't I can't like the yeah. Mr. Fox and the Knox on the socks has a box with the thing. And the, it's just I mean, like they're crazy. Absolutely. Do you crazy. know this one? The big black bug bit the big black bear and the big black bear bled blue black blood. No, because I didn't <laughs> study. So I don't know all these things that people would do. They would all have these like, you know, these tongue twisters that they would do. And I would just like, you know, walk on set and be like, I guess I'll try today. You know, my <laughs> father is a fig plucker. He plucks figs. He's the fastest fig plucker that ever plucked a fig. My <laughs> sister is a sheet slitter. She's slit sheet. She's the fastest slit sheet that ever slit a sheet. Wait, that's the one where you can say shit sheets or shit something. Shit sheets. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of uh, ones like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Talking about your traits, though, and people yeah. sort of, it's the same thing as having a friend that just, I don't want to say isn't grateful, mm. but doesn't appreciate things. Not just things that you might do for them or things that you might experience together, but just sort of has this attitude like, and maybe look, it's depression, it's whatever, yeah. it's self loathing. It's, we all, I, I've, I've dealt with this. But, the sooner you weed out people that bring you down, yep. that are not influencing a positive aspect in your life, the faster your life will improve. Mm. It's just, it's it's very easy. Yeah. If you're around someone and they're just always, they have issues and it's always about them and there's problems and Oh, uh, it's just like me. Oh, I have, I have a friend who's always like, oh, of course, that happens to me. Of course, of course. Happens to me. Yeah. Bad news. So there's one thing where, but if you feel like you're always helping them, you're always trying to get them up, you're trying to lift their spirits, you can't be everyone's cheerleader. No. That is going to drain you for mm-hmm. everything. And it's taken me so many years. I would try to make, look, I'm, look I got to help my unhappy self. Yeah. Before I help someone else that's unhappy. Yeah, you got to put on your mask before you can put on someone else's. There you go. That's what you do. Yeah. So it's it's difficult, but it's funny when you do cut someone off. And it hasn't happened many times in my life. My life improves exponentially. Yeah. Exponentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I and I, I mean this when I say this, that I didn't truly start living until my husband loved me. Wow. And he was the first person I ever dated. I've dated some wonderful men and some assholes. Mm -hmm. But he was the first person who didn't try to change anything about me and just loved me. Wow. And I, there was such a freedom and confidence that came out of that um, because he loved me and really, really, really well and um, allowed me to just be myself. And I finally, for the first time at 38, when I met him, started having fun again because I wasn't embarrassed to be anything. I was just myself and started having fun and didn't care what people thought of me because this man loves me. Wow. And it was really beautiful. And there was a lot of strength in that that I got from him just think, by loving me. Do you think you you – Learn to love yourself when he started loving mm. you because you thought you were. Yeah. I wow. Did. Yeah. Because I, my husband is probably the best man I've ever met. My dad's phenomenal. I'm not talking about my family. My husband is such a good, kind man. And I recognized from the moment I met him that he was going to make some woman very happy one day. And so the moment that he chose me, I literally in my mind went, oh my God, I must not be that bad. Like I must actually be a really good person. That's beautiful and sad at the same time. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. You felt worthy. I did. It made you feel like you, it made you feel not that worthy. Like it just made you feel good enough 
and for you, and stop. Just good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah, good enough. More I, than I had never felt good enough, and because I'd never felt good enough for other people, I didn't feel good enough for myself. I felt my entire life like I needed to be better. I needed to be somebody else. I needed to be anything but me because me wasn't enough. And when I found someone who I loved and who I saw them as this amazing person and that person loved me, it immediately made me realize I didn't have to be anything other than myself. And it was the most freeing thing that's ever happened to me. And I truly started to like become myself. That is the key to meet someone whose agenda is not to change you. Mm. Yeah. You know? But it could be anyone, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic partner. I think that that it could be anyone that you encounter in your life that you respect as a human being. If that person says you're enough, just believe them. You know? Yeah. It's hard when your whole life you don't believe that you're enough. Because mm. because history has shown that you weren't because you didn't feel it because you didn't get it yeah. from the people who were supposed to give it to you. Yeah. And then you get to a certain point in, in life where you say, okay, I've got to work this out mm. because this is, this can't be true. This can't be true that I'm not worthy, mm. that I'm not worth it, that I'm not um, all these things lovable or that I'm smart. I'm not smart. I'm not, and sometimes you have to put logic. You have to say, um, are you successful? Yes. Do people appreciate your work? Yes. Do you, you ask all these questions that are presented that are pretty much easy. Like, mm -hmm. do you love yourself? And that's always been a tough one for me. That's always been the big kick in the ass. That's like, um, I don't really love myself, but. I like moments of it. Like mm. sometimes I go, that was cool, dude. And you did that altruistically. You didn't do that because the camera was rolling. You didn't do that because you did it because you generally have a good heart. Mm -hmm. And those are the moments when I say, I like you. I like that person. I like that element of you. I like yeah. that moment of you. Yeah. So I haven't gotten to that point where I'm like, fuck yeah, man, I love myself. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't look at it that way. Yeah. Um, I look at it as like, hey, keep going after those moments. Keep showing yourself that you are a good person that you, you know, and you yeah. are, but like, just keep doing good things. Keep collecting moments. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find yourself sure. doing that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I find myself, especially the older I get, collecting moments and collecting memories and holding on to to little things. Cause I'm I'm I am very aware that uh statistically I'm halfway through. Jesus, why'd you bring that up? <laughs> I feel like there's strength in that though. You're how old are you? Forty three. Somebody said like they were 51, which got my attention. It was on Instagram. Mm. Everybody's a fucking spokesman now. Yeah. Everybody's got the fucking all. Everything's worked out. Here's what you need to do. Three things in life that if you're doing, you'll, and, uh -huh. and it's all, and one, do this. Every morning, breathe in five breaths. And then, and then number two, uh, look in the mirror and brush your teeth with your left hand instead <laughs> of your right. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know, everybody has these ideas about what we should be doing, which is overwhelming. Yeah. And it should be like, hey, forget everything. Put in your body healthy things yep. that are going to give you natural energy and don't eat as much junk food. Yeah. Everything in moderation doesn't mm -hmm. mean you can't do that. You could get hit by a truck tomorrow. Of course. So I don't want to get hit by a truck knowing, oh, God, I wasn't eating that ice cream sandwich. It's yeah. just everything in yeah. modern moderation. Yeah. And, you know, being a good person, yeah. eating right, a little exercise, a little, you know, being with your friends, uh, letting go. Um, that's that's more that's better advice than a lot of this shit. It just overwhelms me. It now. is overwhelming. And I think what it get is. An is ice bath. Get an ice bath. I uh, have an ice I'm bath. I'm gonna get one. Is it is it magic? It is magic. We have a renew ice bath, which I absolutely love. Um, they must have given you that phrase since you said it. No, we, uh, I have my Renew. Um, we sold one with our house. When we moved from Los Angeles, we sold it with our house and just bought another one. And I 
I say this because I, I absolutely love it. There are other cold plungers out there, like not sponsored, that that I feel like they're less expensive. Um, Do they little, have the little thing that cools a, it? They have a lot of like influencers that use them. And Do then they have you, a cooler that makes it water uh -huh, cold? Uh -huh. But then you have something like uh, Renew that's like more expensive, but like it just works. It's a, it's an investment. And that's the way that I looked at it as an investment in my health. And, and cause it makes my hips feel better because I have bad hips. Really? So I get in the cold plunge. Um, so it really reduces inflammation. I believe that it does. Absolutely. I also believe that you should probably talk to your doctor first and make sure that your heart is healthy. I, I know that there's a lot a of people, I know that a lot of people are like, you know, you take your cold plunge and people are like, Oh my God, you could have a heart attack. Yeah. Well, I, I also know that I don't have a heart problem Yeah. and I'm really healthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Zampic, <laughs> you know, if you have heart problems or you have diarrhea, this will cause uh, explosive diarrhea in most people. <laughs> yeah. Those, no, I, I have no idea yeah. what it does. I don't know. Maybe no, I don't know. Too. No, I, I think that everyone is an expert. And you learn this when you are a parent. People are dying to tell you how to raise your kid. Dying to. Because if 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 it works for them, it's not enough. They need it to work for you as well. Because then it validates what they did to their kid. And so, like, everyone wants to tell you, do this, do that, do this. I do it too. I'm like, have you heard of taking care of babies? Go sleep train your kid. And everyone's like, I can sleep train my kid. That's so bad. Like, so everyone has their shit and everyone tells you what they did is works and whatever, because every, it, what works for everyone is different. That's exactly everyone right. Everyone has their own shit, but everyone wants to tell you it worked for them because they're so proud of it and it validates but the you know fact what? that it worked for them. I will say that like this podcast with each guest, mm. that's sort of like what works for you. And when the audience is listening, like, hey. Katie's advice might just work for you. Mm. My advice might work for you. Yeah. Every guest, you might get a little something, a little nugget that you go, you know what, that actually worked for me. Yeah. You know, somebody came up, he's a patron and they support the podcast and they're amazing. Uh, Patreon.com slash inside you. And he came up to me, goes, you know, that athletic greens really works. And I go. Well, awesome. Great. And he goes, yeah. I go, well, how do you feel? He goes, I'll tell you all, when I don't take it, I could feel it. I was like, all right, all bud, right I'm glad buddy. it works for you. Because it really because I really like it and Tom really likes it and we talk about yeah. it. But again, you know, it's you gotta try things and and, yeah. and and see what works for you. I like athletic greens too. They don't sponsor my podcast. Maybe they will after this. Maybe they will. Maybe I'll send them this clip. Because I actually take athletic greens. All right. Daily. We're, we're gonna send this clip to Athletic Greens Guys. and see what they say. Athletic Greens. <laughs> um, and you go on my link tray for all that stuff. <laughs> Would you do Battlestar Galactic again? It depends on the script. They came at you and go, we're doing another eight episode special event. Mm. Yeah, it would depend on who was involved in the script for sure. And who was in charge. But, uh, but you wouldn't say yes without seeing. No. All no. right. Did you have no. fun doing the last one? I did. I did. I, I love that cast. We are family. We are family for sure. Edward James almost. Everyone involved. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. There's not one person that was on that show. And look, we're like family. We've had some shit. We've had some moments. Really? Every uh, Yeah. Like we've had some. On set? No. No. But like uh, off, out, out of work. It's been 20 years. You know what I mean? Or 25 yeah, years yeah. since we started it. Whatever it was. That's so like, right. It's been a long time. There's a lot of different personalities. Like you can rub people the wrong way. You can, Trisha Helfer and I got in a fight. It's one of my best friends, got in a fight. Knock, like knock down, drag out. We, obviously we weren't hitting each other, but we had it. We went at each Screaming other. Screaming at each other? Yeah. In person? Yeah. Yeah. Not FaceTime. Not screaming, but like, yeah, really like, heated. Why are you acting like a bitch? Really heated. Really, really and heated. Wow. And we, you know, made it through it. Made was it, it about anything really that important if you look back at it? Nothing's important. No. No, of course not. It's important you figure it out. That's yeah, what's important. Of course not. It was obviously not important and our friendship meant more. But you know what I mean? Like so we we're like family. If we we have some shit, but you know, you give them a kidney. I like that. That's honesty. Yeah. You know, you have moments with people and they become family like even with me and Welling. 
Like, I feel like, you know, Tom, I can say anything to now. Mm -hmm. We're close enough where I could say, hey, dude, don't do that. Like, goes, what are you fucking talking about? I'm like, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, don't do that or whatever. And yeah. he'll say something to me like, hey, when you talk about that, it comes off as this. And I go, oh, really? So we listen to each other. Yeah. And so I was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Well, I think when 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 you know that someone loves you and wants what's best for you and and you in turn love them, I believe that you can say most anything to them because it's coming from a place of of authenticity and and just you know, I would never intentionally hurt somebody's feelings by saying anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um I know you don't watch a lot of movies. I don't. You're busy. Being a parent is exhausting. Oh yeah. It's exhausting. No. Um I and imagine. I, I do not know how, I do not know how people do it without help. I don't know. I don't know either. Especially single moms. Here's to all the single moms. Oh my god. All the single and moms. all the single dads. Oh, single as and well. single dads. But like, here's to all like the like the single parents who are making it work and working their butts off, and all they wish is they had more time with their kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. Yeah. You're you're a good mom. I could tell. You really care. You're a. Uh, Whoa. Family first. You found the love of your life and you have a kid together. It's, it's, yeah, you know, for sure. I do feel that, but I also waited a really long time. I waited to, to really meet the right person. So you're saying there's hope for me. I'm waiting a really long time. There's hope for everyone. I think, you know, but everyone has a different journey, right? Mine yeah. is very different. And, and that doesn't mean that it's easy. You know, it doesn't mean that, that my life doesn't have tragedy in it. Yes. You just choose not to focus on it. Have you, are your parents with you? No. They are. They yeah. are. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Both my parents are doing really well. My mom had a fall like four years ago. Stupid bitch. She was like. <laughs> <laughs> you say stupid bitch. Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> and she would bitch. admit it. My mom had like live plants on the top of her cat, like cupboards. Ladies, men. If you're of a certain age, take the fucking plants off the shelf and put fake ones up there for God's sake. Yeah. My mom fell off the counter by herself at home because she was using the stool, the, the bar stool oh, as, a, as a ladder Done to that. water the plants. She fell. She missed the counter by like she could have died. She landed on her elbow, shattered her elbow. Oh my God. Broke a rib. I mean, like bitch. awful. Stupid bitch. Jesus. Don't. Just don't. That was a really my hard My mom that was falls hard. a lot. She falls. Well, it's like the number one. It's like I fall one and of the, I can't get up. Well, yeah. but it is. It is. No, I know. It is the thing that. I know. That's what scares me. My grandma's 95, and the only thing I'm scared about falling. Falling. One yep. fall. See ya. Yeah. Yeah. I watch. I, I mean, I'm 43 years old and in very good shape, and I watch my f footing. Because yeah. like a fall could change my life, you know. Like I could, there, I fall down the stairs. I ain't gonna bounce <laughs> That's back that why easily. I, 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 did I do that on this podcast where I talk about the comedian that I thought was so funny? The black comedian. He goes, "They say thirty, the new thirty, new twenty. They say forty, the new thirty. But when you fifty, you just damn fifty. <laughs> ain't nothing new about that shit. <laughs> Only difference is you gotta grab that handle when you're going up the stairs. You gotta watch one foot in front of the other. I was like, yes." true uh this has been a real treat uh thank you for taking this journey with me again absolutely and uh look forward thank to you your... for letting me invite myself on yes oh <laughs> not really that's a that's a little inside story i thought she goes i want to be on your podcast but she was asking me to be on hers and then we worked it out to be on both but yes we um, worked it out yeah we I'm did glad. a twofer blah, blah 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 with katie sackoff check it out spotify Apple, YouTube. We go into stuff with guests and real life stuff. It's not like gossip actory stuff. It's the same sort of idea, but a female perspective. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's mm -hmm. like she's so open and cool if you've ever met her at a con or whatever. So you're enormously talented. I love you being here. Oh, we got to get you, you to the airport right now. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bye. 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 I, I don't know what else to say other than I love this woman. I wish I was there for this one. Yeah, you were, uh, I think you were sick or traveling. I think it was just traveling. Traveling, yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's fantastic, so listen to her podcast. Yeah. I'm a guest on one of her podcasts. Check that out. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it, really, for this episode. If you like the show, review it. Send a review. 
Uh, join Patreon, patreon.com slash inside of you. Help the show out. It's it's all the people that are part of Patreon that really make this show work. Um, without you guys, could afford to pay good people like Ryan and Bryce and and Jason and who's an amazing team. I, I wish that this podcast made so much money that you just felt like you wanted to always be at my house, just hang out. I mean, I could just, I could live here and you wouldn't even know it. Sounds Why? like it sounds like a challenge. Why? Why would I notice? I don't know. I could, you I could own, sneak you, around the shadows. There's plenty of guest rooms. You have your own wing. Yeah, plenty of guest rooms. There's one, but you know. Well, I mean? no, there's 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 really the office has a pull out bed. There you go. The basement. Yeah. You can sleep in. You could sleep in here on this couch. Would this couch be comfortable? This one. It's firm. It's fine. Thanks for uh, indulging, folks. It's uh, quite boring what we're getting into now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go right now and uh, talk about the uh, top tier patrons and give a shout out to all of them who makes who make this show possible. Um, and a big shout out to Westwood One, who um, produces the podcast. I mean, Bryce really produces the podcast, but Westwood One gets our advertisers, which are you know, which we'll we'll mention, and hopefully, you don't fast forward them. And I really believe in a lot of these guys, so we don't pick. Um, sponsors that we don't like that's for sure you know better helps one of my favorites of all time uh all right here we go top tiers top tier patrons uh do you have the the, the script here oh, right here do you have it right there yeah oh. I, I have this for you so you can help me read i think people like hearing you i think um that's very nice of them <laughs> yeah i think people really like you ryan you want to take my job over could you do it uh no maybe I'll I'll work on a on a spinoff series if this gets popular. Well, enough. you're kind of like my Ed McMahon. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 yeah, you'll be my Ed McMahon. Nancy <laughs> D, Leah and Kristen, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C, Jennifer N. Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, ninety nine more, Santiago M, Leanne P, Maddie S, Belinda N. Um, let's see, Dave, Dave Hall, Dave H. Hello, Dave. I miss you. I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, I hope to see you soon. We're gonna do a a Zoom with the top tier patrons, Dave. Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, ha da da, Tabitha T. Um. Let's do one like maybe New York or Tom N, Talia M, Betsy D, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Eugene and Leah, Corey, Mel S, Christine S. Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Oracle, Amanda R, Kevin E. You don't Stephanie. want to do the New York? I'm going to trip and fall. Hey, what, what's a good phrase to get into it? Um, like you say, New York. New York. Yeah, New York, New York. Uh, Jorel, 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 Jam and J, Leanne J, hey, the L- J- Luna R, Luna R, Mike F, Stone H, Brian L, Jules M, Kendall L, Jessica B, Kyle F, Kaylee J, Brian A, Marion Louise L, Romeo the Band, the Band. You're getting a little <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> that Brent one's easier B, for me. Genty, Nikki, Genty, Nicholas, Nikki L. And the best pack you can have it. Yeah. Randy S. Nikki L. April RM. Randy S. JDW. Oral P. Rachel D. Laura Lyell. Melissa H. Nick W. Stephanie and Evan. Char- Charlene A. Don G. Jenny B. John. Jennifer R. Tina E. NG Tracy. Junie and Tasha S. Those are the wonderful top tier patrons. But all my patrons are wonderful. Every one of you. And, um, uh, this has been a treat. I hope you enjoyed the episode and you continue to watch. And uh, we're working hard to get you great guests. And there's a lot of great guests coming up. Um, you know who we got coming up? Who? One of my heroes. Mm. Billy D. Williams. I can't Lando believe it. Calrissian. I can't Region. believe it. Cal- Calrissian. Calrissian. Lando Calrissian. Lando. Yep. Mm. Ha! You old! <laughs> I love it. I'm excited. My friend Chris McDonald... Uh, said you want billy d i think i get billy d for you i'm like yeah can you come to the house sure i love when they come to the house that's always nice it's like a personal thing it's like you know when keanu came here we're like Mm -hmm. talking to keanu it's Mm -hmm. it's you know it's real um thank you for listening to the podcast uh from the hollywood hills in hollywood california i am michael rosenbaum 
I'm Ryan Tays. I'm here too. Yeah, a little wave to the camera. We love you guys, and please always be good to yourself. All right. Most things are nothings. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Damn.